Welcome to Housing Developments. I'm Jim Tobin. And I'm Paul Lopez. Paul, how are you? Back in the studio Back in the studio, again. yeah, yeah, maybe for, uh, we're on the road a little bit yeah, uh, next yeah. week too, but uh, but yeah, it's good to be back. And in August, you know, you start, things start shutting down, people go on vacation, yeah. or the meetings start, you know, one or the other, right? It's either yeah. you're 100% in with the meetings, or you have to go on vacation to get away from them all. That's right, yeah, yeah, it's still, it's still D.C., it's still very much that kind of, that uh, that, that town where, where August people take off, is, you know, the rhythm of Congress and everything. So yeah, so we, we one more month of a little bit of legislating, and then... Uh, and then it'll be it'll be quiet until September. Yeah, and then up again for the for the elections. That's so. right. That's right. That's right. Um, let's begin with our sponsor. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, LG Pro, Pro Builder. Builder. Let's build a good life together. Thank you, LG. Absolutely. Um, all right. So we, we've been kind of teeing this up now for a few weeks. Um, Tom Ward, our, our legal scholar, right. yes. um, was here a few weeks ago talking about the Chevron deference case. Um, we have a decision. Supreme Court ruled. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and kind of like largely what Tom had predicted, that the, yeah. the majority in the court on a 6-3, you know, the conservatives all banded together. No right. surprise. Uh, John Roberts has been very skeptical right. of, uh, of, of, of the Chevron deference case originally. So not, a, not surprised that he wrote the opinion on it. Right. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, they, they, they essentially threw it out and, and said that, no, uh, the courts will decide what is uh, under the law as passed by Congress and enacted by the president. Or Congress can actually do their job yeah. and actually, you know, take away all that ambiguity, right? Well, they should, right? I mean, we, we've we've known for years, you know, we just you just looking at the Clean Water Act and and, and wetlands and in the four hundred four program, we we generally believe that the 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 unelected bureaucrats have decided to define what is or isn't a navigable water in this country right. for the better part, if not more than forty years, and that's what we fight about. Court cases unwind it, then somebody winds it, and then we're right. going back and forth. Well, the reality is that Congress should have been explicit on what a navigable water is um and so they're gonna have that opportunity and more litigation we're not sure really what it means yet sure right but you know i do think uh in the in the long haul from a regular from a regulated entity's point is as, as highly regulated as in is uh you know home building is uh, i think it's a good thing to you know perhaps bring some sanity right. uh, back to the regulatory environment and continuity right i mean the, the thing that we've always been against is the agencies write, not only write the laws, but then they get to enforce the laws and interpret the laws. Right, right. Um, that seems a, a lot. Right? Yeah, and we, and we whipsaw back and forth between administrations. Again, we're exactly. just taking the Clean Water Act and, and wetlands, for instance. Um, but I think what 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 ultimately, and, we, and we'll see how this goes. Right, there's yeah. I've gotten a lot of calls from members saying, "Oh, this is great. We can we can sue on this. We can sue on that." And so, you know, let let's let's take a moment. <laughs> uh, of course, you know the cases have to be right and uh, and everything. But um, I think what this is going to do, you know, you said put the onus back on Congress uh, to actually pass laws in their meaning, which means more carefully crafted, crafted legislation, more bipartisan legislation. Yeah. But more importantly, I think you're going to find subject matter experts, especially like those we have here at NHB. Yeah. They're going to we're going to rely on them to write the the new laws. Right. And I think that's a good thing. I I, I think that's a good thing. Yeah. Um, rather than you know writing a comment letter uh, to to faceless bureaucrats and regulators. Yeah. But actually being able to go lobby about you know the right way to you know whether it's compromise, uh, but getting lawmakers to pay attention. And I think there that means there's going to be more importance on associations like ours yeah. uh, in this space and, and members like ours to tell us what it's like on the ground and help us craft you know really good, solid legislation. Yeah, 100%. I mean, it, it, we're already in the room when it happens, right. when we can. I think this will just open up the door even more and we yeah. just getting in there and, and be able to, to show, like you, what you just said, kind of the, our expertise, right? Right. Uh, these, these men and women up on Capitol Hill, I mean, it's a lot of stuff, right? right. And right. a lot of bureaucracy and a lot, right. of, a, a lot of laws that they're trying to push. Right. They need us, right. essentially, right? right? Yeah, I think this people, whether it's tearing down the regulatory state, I, I don't think that's the case. I think we should look at it from the positive, which is we're going to get better laws because of this and where when, where the regulations have have gone stretched way beyond the intent of legislation. Mm -hmm. Yes, we're going to be able to rein those in. and. But again, let's let's rely on on writing good, solid, bipartisan, enduring laws, right. because th that takes away, like you said, the, the, the kind of the whiplash that right. that we've been seeing, right. and and our members and and almost every small business owner right. in America, right? As long as you have continuity and clarity, 
that goes a long way. That's right. And us talking about housing affordability and all the stuff that we have right. to do, right. th- th- this this will definitely help. Yeah. Uh, at least it looks like Agreed. it initially. Yeah, and I look forward to having Tom in here. We can get even a yeah. little little uh, little into the nitty gritty on this too. But uh, but yeah, no, but but a big win for us, no doubt. So, but let me ask you a question because. You know, we, we we talk about you know how the the Biden administration goes one direction, and then before that, Trump was over here. Right. Trump on the on the campaign trail has been saying, "Oh, well, we're going to be changing a lot of things, you know, and, and moving things back and what right. have you." This kind of takes away a little bit of what his game plan is, right? Because he can't, you know, get somebody in there in the administration, EPA, right. and say, okay, this is how we're interpreting these laws. Right. It, it's going to kind of right. change up the process here in, in a great yeah, way. Yeah, I mean, right? if, if if Trump puts something in place, you know, who's to say that the, the other side, whatever the other side yeah. is, could, could sue on this too, right? Sure. I mean, the, 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 you know, the Democrats and Republicans equally overread and overreach on <laughs> on on regulation. So, right. yeah, this is this can be a boon for 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 I guess we'll say we'll keep in the political realm for the parties. Yeah. But I think, you know, this is, you know, it's it's hard to unwind things. You know, we're gonna see, you know, Trump is talking about getting rid of this and getting rid of that. Yeah. A lot of what what the Biden administration has done is put rules in place that aren't going to be easily mm-hmm. upended by a new, a, a, you know, potential Trump administration. It'll have right. to go through rulemaking and right. and things like that. So, I mean, yeah, I, I, I the, the world is not ending for <laughs> for for everybody. Um, but but again, I think I think we need to think of this as a positive that we can we can we can influence the front end of the process rather than the middle of the process with regulations and then and then suing if it all it all breaks you know maybe at the end of the day yeah uh, there's a little bit let a little bit less litig- litigation out there so it, it sounds like this is a long-term solution short term it's still going to be a little bit murky as you said everyone's going to be kind of oh yeah hey, no, figuring I, it out, I, first yeah of all. no I'm, i imagine that that there are you know countless uh you know business groups that are, are you know looking for plaintiffs to file cases <laughs> right. about so i i think it'll be uh, it'll grind through uh, for a while, but you know, I, I can I can tell you, you know, we're already anticipating where where can this help us yeah. with with regulations that we think have gone too far, and you know, it's going to be it's going to be another strategy for us to reduce the regulatory burdens on this industry. Yeah, but I think we need we definitely need Tom Ward back in here and kind we of giving do. us the nitty gritty. We do. So uh, stay tuned for that. Yeah. Um, probably in the next coming weeks, hopefully. So, um, all right. So we, we, let, let's we've. We've kind of already touched upon yeah. the the possible Trump administration slash possible Biden administration, the debates. Yeah, or the, uh, or the debates, the debate. which I think <laughs> it's going to be in for for as long as I can remember with a capital T and a and a capital D. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I and I've said this on the on the on the pod for for a lot of months. I get asked all the time. I was in Charleston last week visiting with our, our HBA down there, and I got asked this kind of the same question of, "Do you really think Biden's going to run?" And I, 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 I've been consistent on yes, he's going to run, all the know, way. barring some some health. Uh, true health emergency where he is no longer capable of running, yeah. or and um, and I, I think I've sort of changed my mind after the debate. Really? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so I came into the debate a little bit late. I was I had to take a, a late phone call, and I walked in, and I audibly, I audibly said, "Oh my God!" Uh, it's my it was my family was watching it, and because I, I was shocked at at the president's um, uh, countenance, yeah. uh, his <laughs> voice. I, I think you know we get it. He's he's an he's an he's an older guy, uh, right. and yeah, we we get it. Uh, yeah. But I was I was shocked at how. Uh, how stark he looked, yeah. um, you know, and everybody likes to remind everybody, well, President Trump's only three years behind him. Yeah. Um, yeah but Trump looked, definitely looked more vibrant. I just I, I think anyway. So I was I was shocked. And then the debate the performance itself was right. was tough to watch. It was uh, tough to watch. And and so now, you know, we've had this now we're, you know, not I guess we're almost a weekend. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and boy, it, boy, the, the sharks are circling. They are. I mean, it was loud and fast. I mean, yeah. everything started blowing up, at least here in Washington, D.C. Right. You know, if, if, if you had any kind of Twitter account yeah, or whatever, right. either side, they were like yeah. pinging like, OK, Biden might be out. Democrats are, are trying to figure it out. Right. Uh, going back to our podcast, though, like the, the big disappointment was everyone's talking about housing. And guess what's the, what's the issue that wasn't mentioned in, yeah, in, in the debate, right? Yeah. I, 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 if I remember, President Biden said, I, I want to build uh, 2 million new homes. Uh, but then he also said, I want to cap rents. So like, oh, <laughs> yeah, well, the, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away, right? <laughs> right? So, yeah, no, that's, that's it's just, it, it, 
God, I wish I could have prepped both of them. You're right. You know, I just it's one of those moments where you're like, God, who's who's handling these guys? Like I can we can I can, you know, you have one job. <laughs> yeah. If I could have just walked, talked to both of them on their way out to the stage. Anyway. So, uh, yeah, it's really unfortunate because the economy is such a big campaign issue yeah. and housing is such a big issue for the economy. Yes. Uh, that it was uh, it was not mentioned uh, even even, you know, any a passing blow. Uh, so anyway, I just it, it was really disappointing from a policy perspective. Yeah. Not a ton of policy. I didn't think the president did a good job of articulating what he had done and what yeah. he will do. President Trump uh, did not do or, vice, or former President Trump did not do a good job of articulating what he would do other yeah. than, you know, kind of talking about the litany of complaints and and, and all that. And and by the way, as a fellow golfer, I was glad to see <laughs> golf actually had more talk about that than housing did. <laughs> um, and, and here's my here's my general take. If we could just I would cancel the elections okay. and I would just have Trump and Biden play, play. No, no, I would I would do a three a three uh, round aggregate and whoever wins. That's who's the next president. Like that, that everybody would tune in. Uh, it would be awesome. I think you, it would it would rival any of the majors. And whoever wins over over a three day match, mm. I really think it would be. That's Trump, how we should settle this. Does, does, does Trump cheat though? Like he's, he's notoriously a, a big cheater in golf. So. I am not going to say out of the podcast and accuse the former president of cheating. I'm not I, accusing I, anybody. I'm yeah, just saying. No, I, I, I'm, I, but I do think um, is it would be pretty interesting. Yeah, uh, that would be a great way to settle this, and much more entertaining than what we're going to have to slog through over the next four months. Yeah, but, true. Uh, yeah, really surprising. I, it will be really curious if the if the president survives the next week and a half. I mean, that's the general feeling. Okay, but the, who replaces him? Like, yeah, well, Kamala Harris is. Yeah, I've said this to Kamala Harris is in the catbird seat in the sense that she's a sitting vice president sure. and always have an inherent val- value uh, sorry advantage yeah whether or not uh, the party thinks she can win you know <sighs> Right. The, the, the Democrats trying to couch this is we have to defeat Trump for the sake of democracy. That's really what this is about. Yeah. Um, I also think that there's plenty of people saying for the sake of democracy and our standing in the world, President Biden can't run either. Yeah. But I think Kamala Harris, how do you replace the first elected uh, female black president, you know, certainly uh, vice president? Uh, vice president. Yeah. How do we do that? Uh, you know, do you hand it over to. Uh, the rich white guy is governor of California, Gavin yeah. Newsom. How about the really rich governor of Illinois and J.B. Pritzker, <laughs> uh, Gretchen Whitmer? You know, so you know, you know Michelle Obama's name is thrown out there. Oh. You know, how do you, how do you, how do you bypass the vice president? And so, the real question is to become her viability as a candidate. She certainly would 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 co. She certainly would um, sure would unite. The, the black community that we know has yep. been uh, you know loyal, been stu- loyal and, yep. and, and but but is not really enthusiastic about the president does she unite the the the, the, the big left yeah. uh, behind her shore but um, you know yeah it's just gonna be tough but it it's gonna be a bloodletting yeah and and then and then you've got to stand up a, a presidential candidate they'll have plenty of money sure. but uh, with it with essentially a couple months to go right uh, meanwhile Trump it looks like because of the court uh, about the Supreme Court ruling on oh, immunity, immunity. Yeah. They're, they're, they've already put off sentencing, which was was slated to happen the week before the Republican convention. Now it's going to happen probably the week after. Yeah. He doesn't go with he doesn't go with that hanging over his head. You right. know what his punishment is going to be? Still a convicted felon. There's a there's a ugh, there's a ton of momentum behind Trump right now. Yeah. Um, I would never count out the incumbent party, but. Um, Vice President, is, uh, President Biden is still viable because of Trump's troubles. Correct. And I think Trump is still viable because of Biden's <laughs> troubles, <laughs> yeah. right? So think right. of it that way. It's almost like both men need the other one in the race. <laughs> it's kind of strange. I don't know. It's Well, the, it's, the, yeah. the, the question, you know, a lot of people, because Trump is notorious for saying this, right? Like, well, I'm in this race because it can't be Biden. Right. And then the question is, well, if Biden... You know, pulls out. Right. Does that mean you pull out? Right, right, I right. doubt it. Yeah, right. no, no, no. Right, right. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I don't know if the president survives um, politically. I was going to say politically. Yeah, no. yeah, yeah. No, I, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Um, yeah. Just today, I saw some quotes this afternoon before yeah. we came in, uh, where you're starting to see lawmakers start to say it's time to go for the good of the party. Right, he needs to bow out. Very proud man. People feel genuinely like Joe Biden. He's a good man. Yeah, yeah. Um, but you know, you it's 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 party over personal. And, and, and he he went to Camp David almost immediately afterwards with their with with his campaign strategist with his family. Right. 
the family kind of blamed the prep team right. for all this. Right. Uh, that's hard to, yeah. to really justify. Yeah. But at the end of it, the family is encouraging him to stay in the race, right? Yeah. Um, it, it's, you know, re- remember, you, you're going to have bad days, but every bad day for Joe Biden from now on Resonates. looks exactly like the debate night yeah. and is going to remind you. See, he can't afford any, yeah. any, any moments of walking off the stage. Strangely, he can't. He can't. Any moments of, of, of looking like he's recalling something more than a couple seconds, and everyone it will remind everyone day to day that he is not ready to do another four years. Yeah, yeah. It's just it, it, it it's a tough spot for the party. Um, and yeah. then you got to go to Chicago. Right. Not not you know not, w- not the friendliest protest. <laughs> right. Who do you put out there? Yeah, yeah. it's I, it'd be really interesting to see how uh, you know can the Democrats circle the wagons. Do you, uh, and I, I, I hate I'm not I'm not picking sides here, but I do want to end this question of do you think Trump dodged a bullet? Because every fact checker, you know, you looked in and like, oh, he, he probably 80 percent of what he said was was false. Right. And, and no yeah. one's really talking about everyone's talking about Joe Biden. Right, right. But, every, you know, it's kind of like it, it kind of reminded me a little bit about the Nixon Kennedy debate. You know, yeah. like if you saw it on TV, Kennedy won. If right. you heard it on the radio, it was Nixon. Right. And basically, if, if you hear the, the if you look at the transcript. Right. 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 Biden nailed it, right? He he he, he hit he, a, he yeah. hit his points. Not everything. God, God, right. God love him. Right. But you do the fact checking. At least he was fairly accurate. Right. Trump not so much. Do, yeah, do you but think I think for the general population, people know that Trump plays fast and loose with the, <laughs> with with facts. Uh, and and so I don't. I think I still think this ba- this race is really well baked in. Yeah, I yeah, we just about, do. Yeah. I just think that the numbers we're going to see over the course of this week with all the polls that have gone post debate. Are going to show where the where the moderates or, or the independents have moved. Yeah. You know, I've seen plenty of say I can't vote for Biden, but there's no way I vote for Trump. I'll find another candidate. Yeah. You know, does does Kamala Harris or the or the the, the Democrat capture those people? Do, um, you know, does Trump get, pick up some folks? Say, well, he's not that bad, but compared to Biden, uh, he's my guy. I, yeah. I I just I don't I don't know. I I, j- I just wonder how much we're going to see a bump, and if and if and if Trump doesn't really start running away by three or four points, where he's already had three or four points, does that give yeah. Biden say, hey, look, I, I just think that the fundamental question is not whether Biden can win against Trump, it's whether or not he's going to can, can he make Convince. it four more years? Yeah, 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 that's true. And so, ugh. do you think there's an independent or third party spoiler? No. Cheney, no. no, no, no. I don't. I really don't. Um, no, I still think you know. There's you know Jill Stein's running. Um, Cornell West. Cornell West. But those are the candidates, and then of course uh, RFK Jr. Take away from Biden. They take away from Biden now, and and that that helps that helps Trump no matter what. Yeah, sure. Um, so. Yeah, it's gonna be fun. Ooh. Yeah, right. Just <laughs> yeah. when you thought this race couldn't get any more interesting. Oh my god, boy! You know, it's like you know, it's insane. Yeah. So, um, all right. I guess more. Stay tuned. Yeah, I really. Guess. Yeah, no, that's uh, that's a good one. All right. Um, all right. Let's call it right. Yeah. Until until next time, we'll have some more economic data. You yep. know, next week, and yep. uh, we'll talk a little bit about what's going on. That's right. Um, happy Fourth of July. Yeah. Happy Fourth of July, everybody. Yeah. Happy Independence Day. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Stay safe. Um, enjoy it. Have fun. And uh, we'll be on the road, but together next week. We will, So yeah. hopefully we'll, 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 be, be, we'll be able to banter a bit. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Awesome. Yeah. So good. All right, well, until next time, I'm Jim Tobin. And I'm Paul Lopez. See you. Bye.